Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, 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 Jesus. Glory, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Welcome, welcome, welcome to a better life ministry. We'd like to thank you for joining us tonight for our midweek connect. We ask that you do us one favor, share this broadcast, start a watch party, whatever you can do to get this broadcast across the nation. Because that's our heart's posture today to glorify the Most High King and give thanks to the Most High God. Yes, Lord. So we're going to open up with Psalms 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with prayers. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. So come on, I need to feel y'all tonight. Come on, put those clapping emojis across the screen. Come on, I need to see those hands lifted across the screen. Come on, let me see those heart emojis. Let me see those thumbs ups. Come on and join with us tonight. Come on, because we came to bless the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and put those hands together. Hallelujah. Yes. Come on, I came to have fun in the Lord tonight. Come on, I need to feel you. Put those hands together. Come on. Come on and bless the Lord with me. 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 Come on, let me hear you. Come on and bless the Lord with me. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Yeah. Come on and clap those hands with me. Come on and clap those hands with me. Come on, let me see them. Come on and clap those hands with me. Come on and clap those hands with me. Let's do it again. Come on and clap those hands with me 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 come on let's give them high praise hallelujah Come on and do your dance with me. Come on and do your dance with me. Come on, let me see you. Come on and do your dance with me. Come on and do your dance with me. Let's do it again. Come on and do your dance with me. Come on and do your dance with me. Come on and do your dance with me come on and do your dance with me let's take it out and say hallelujah hallelujah yeah hallelujah
trying to do? Give you all the glory. Give you all the glory. Give you all the glory. Lift your name on high. Lift your name on high. That's what we came to do. Lift his name on high. Lift his name on high. One more time, we give him hallelujah. 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 Let me see you put those hands together. Come on.
chasing after you I'm chasing after you I'm praising my way through just to be closer to you I'm chasing after you come on let's do it I'm chasing after you I'm praising my way through just to be closer to you I'm chasing after you yeah I'm chasing after you I'm praying Just to be closer to you, I'm chasing after you, more and more, more and more. We want your love tonight, more and more. We want your spirit in the earth, more and more. We need your peace tonight, more and more. Come on, we need more of you, more and more. Come by here, oh Lord, we need more and more. Come by here, oh Lord, we need more and more. We sing more and more, more and more. We need more of you, my Lord. We want more of you, my Lord. We need you. We need you. We need your presence in the earth. We need more of you. Come on, if you need them tonight, call them out. Say, Jesus. 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 Have your way tonight. Have your way tonight we want more of you more of your wisdom more of your power more of your strength more of your love more of your peace we need you Lord we want more and more more and more more and more come on wherever you are lift your hands and say more of you we want more of you dwell in us today have your way in us today. We need you. We need you, Lord. We need you more, more and more, like never before. Come on, if you need him, call out. Come on, you can cry out to him. He'll hear you tonight. Come on, lift your hands and worship him wherever you are. We want more of you. We need more of you. Have your way, oh God, more and more and more. So come on and put those hands together. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. We need more of you. We need more of you. Thank God for our sister Erica. Tom is leading us out into worship tonight. Thank God for uh, our musicians playing to accompany her. Thank God for all of you that have tuned in to the Midweek Connect Certainly we need more of God and we are chasing, chasing after, chasing after him. The Lord is good. 
and he is so worthy to be praised. Um, the stakes are very high. Anxiety is built up among so many. But we're so happy as the people of God tonight that we are comforted by the word of the Lord as that we're getting ready to delve into. And uh, no matter no matter what the outcome is uh, as relate to our nation and our presidential election, we will trust in the Lord. We will continue to put our trust in the Lord. Thank God that the Lord has again afforded us the opportunity to be found in his presence in the middle of the week, in the middle of the week. Uh, we've been ministering uh, from the topic, the theme, living the dream, living the dream. God knows I could not, I did everything I could, but I could not get out of chapter 41 on Sunday. I couldn't get out of the chapter. The chapter just got so good. And, uh, but I think because all of you are home tonight, uh, watching remotely from wherever you are, I think we'll, we'll be okay tonight and I'll be able to navigate and maneuver through these chapters to see if I can uh, uh, bring us to a close in the fourth installment of Living the Dream. But God knows that he has certainly visited us, to, uh, visited us throughout this text and throughout this teaching as that now tonight we're in the fourth installment and I'd like to uh, consider the fourth installment as a strategy for success. A strategy for success. So in part number one, we dealt with um, Genesis 37, the fact of Joseph having a dream, and even his father Jacob, uh, whom he loved, gave him a coat, gave him a coat of many colors. The Bible said that his brothers hated him for that, and then he had the nerve to articulate his dream that showed the idea that they were in the field and they were working with their sheaves and somehow his sheaves just exceeded theirs and it was as if that his brother and sheaves began to give obeisance to his. And he recalled that dream and shared with them what he saw in his dream. And the Bible said that they hated him, they hated him even the more. And then Joseph had another dream where that uh, it included now uh, the sun and the moon and 11 stars that had begun to give obeisance to him. And that represented even his mother and his father and his 11 brothers. Nonetheless, he communicated, he articulated, he said what he saw. And we are living the dream just as Joseph did but the idea that we are living, you know, the I-N-G, the present participle is continuous. You cannot, you cannot forfeit or abandon the idea of your dream, which as defined is a series of thoughts, emotions and feelings and visions that normally you have when your body is in sleep mode, when you've disconnected from the world around you and you've, you've, you've just tuned out it normally happens, you go through the course of what's called dreaming, where uh, your subconscious of your soul is still alert and still mindful and, and sort of goes on a journey. It happens when you're sleeping. But there are other times that uh, even while you're conscious, while your eyes are open and your body is fully awake, that sometimes you drift off into a trance where people sometimes think that you're gazing at them or you're staring at them, you're focusing on them, but sometimes you're just looking right through them because you're beginning to connect with, with, with the eyes of your vision in your mind and in your heart. The Lord will sometimes show you, give you a glimpse of your future, give you a glimpse of where you're headed, and uh, you begin to lock in and you begin to fasten and focus, and it, it becomes a different phase of form of your dream. And I want to say to you as we've been navigating and maneuvering through the life of Joseph, uh, it cost him to be buried into a pit, left for dead with no water because he was a dreamer, as his brothers uh, referred to him as. He even traded. They figured, let's not leave him here in the pit, but let's, let's trade him. They trade him for 20 pieces of silver, the price of a slave to the Ishmaelites, which wound up taking him into, as it were, 
where he met uh, Potiphar and went into his house and became ruler over his house until Potiphar's wife advanced toward him and he refused her and ultimately he was set up where one day she pulled his coat as he was running away and uh, went as far as to say that it was him that advanced her, which now caused for Potiphar to become furious and frustrated and threw Joseph into the prison. He's brought up out of the prison where we ministered from on Sunday because they needed for someone to interpret the king's dream, which was Pharaoh. And so he goes from dreaming originally, sharing his dream, thrown into a pit, traded into the palace, into the prison. And tonight we're going to pick up his story as that he is the governor of the land. He is the ruler of over Egypt. If you missed installment one, two, and three, uh, I urge you to go back and get it and so that you can catch up. But by God's grace tonight, we're going to delve right into it. We're going to delve right into it. And uh, we're going to pick it up from chapter number 42. Chapter number 42. And we're going to work our way all the way through. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you tonight for this time in your presence. We thank you for your word. We pray, God, that your spirit would minister to our hearts tonight. My God, cause us to receive this word and live by it in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. Thank God. So, here we are in chapter number 42. The Bible picks it up by saying that the famine that was in the land, as it were in the land of Canaan, where Joseph, or rather Jacob, and his, at this point, his 11 sons were there. And he looked up at them and said, why are you all looking at each other in each other's face, in each other's company? Um, why don't you all make yourself useful? Consider that we have a drought here. We have a problem. We, we have a situation here. Go into Egypt and buy us some corn. Get us some food. Get us some bread so that we don't die of famine. We don't die of hunger. And he spoke to his sons and gave them instruction. And they begin to make their way into Egypt. And what's interesting is that when they, when they came to Egypt, uh, one of the first faces that they would see that they would not recognize readily was the face of their brother Joseph. You know, on Sunday, part number three, the third installment, the subtitle was Real Time. I remember in installment one that the Holy Spirit just kept ringing out and echoing in my heart and just ringing out through my spirit real time, real time, that what the Lord is doing prophetically for his people, for those of you that are in the midst and in the phase of those series of thoughts, emotions and visions and just knowing that, uh, that God has something in store for you, the Holy Spirit just kept speaking into my ear and just it echoed in my spirit real time real time. Remember in Genesis 37 when Joseph articulated his dream that his brothers would give obeisance and then dreamt another dream that the 11 stars and the sun and moon had given obeisance. His brothers hated him for it and even his father thought that he was, he was crazy, he was strange. But the Bible says in Genesis 37 that the father, he observed the saying of his son. And the reason why I bring that point out from the third installment subtitle, Real Time, because it is here in Genesis 42, when you get to Genesis 42, it, it, it is here that we see in the sixth verse that they gave credence, they gave deference, they gave obeisance, they bowed, not knowing that it was their brother, but nonetheless as the custom, here it was that they had the sojourning, they had to the travel, and they had to make themselves um, available to, to receive resource, they, they didn't just go to buy without giving honor. And here it is, the governor of the land, the ruler of the land, their brother, and they gave obeisance, they, they gave credence. It is not only there, but uh, even when you get into the 43rd chapter, verses 26, said that they bowed themselves to the earth. Uh, verse 28 says that, again, they gave obeisance. Why am I amplifying that footnote there? Because what had begun to happen for Joseph is real time. 
what he saw before he left his father's house had begun to manifest in the natural. And I am saying to you tonight that the Holy Spirit is going to allow for in real time what you've seen in visions, what you've seen uh, in, in a series of thoughts and even sometimes in meditation and devotion and, and, and throughout the aspect of dreaming, it will manifest, it will manifest in real time just as it did for Joseph. The first encounter of his brothers coming and they begin to state their claim that they had come to buy bread. They, they were coming to buy bread and, and buy supplies. And the Bible says that uh, Joseph recognized them, but they didn't recognize him in verses 7 through 8. And he took the tone and the tenor that, would, that would, some would consider to be a bit harsh, as even the word says, uh, as a hard man and, and to not give in to who he actually was to them. But there's another footnote there that there are times in life where that uh, people, people won't recognize you, but you will recognize them. You will remember them. There are times that as you are living the dream, and again, that, that continuous action, that continuous going, that those, those series of thoughts and emotions and visions, and, and you're walking it out, you're walking it out, that there are people that will scrutinize, but they won't recognize and appreciate the gift that you are, the gift that you possess. They won't, they won't recognize that it is God working in you and through you and for you. They'd rather sit back and scrutinize and, and, and be judgmental. How is it that she has come to this place? How is it that he has, has been allowed to accomplish this or accomplish that? They won't recognize you in your state of manifestation. They, they won't recognize you because everything in their mind and in their heart at some point tried to forget you. Wasn't that all? That's what it was all about. We buried our brother. We sold our brother. We stripped him of his coat of many colors and found an animal to kill and then dipped the coat in the blood and sent the coat back to our father as to suggest we don't know what happened to him. I say to you that God will allow for some of the same people that tried to throw you into the pit, some of the same people that tried to sell you out, some of the same people, my God, that tried to do everything in their mind to forget you, to not recognize you. But yet Joseph recognized them. And so Joseph begins to go through the whole formality of, uh, who are you? You all are spies trying to see how naked or how destitute our land is here in Egypt. They said, oh no, Lord, we are your servants and, and, and we've come to buy and, and take back to our father. He, he's an old man and, 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 and Joseph listened to them and then he said, no, you were spies. You were spies. And they begin to plead the case and and this happened three times that Joseph referred to them as spies. And uh, what Joseph said was, um, you said you have a father. You said you have 12 brothers. But it's only 10 of you. They said that's because uh, our father, who's an old man, the, 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 the youngest child is with him. Now you'll remember that the youngest child, as that Jacob had two wives, Rachel and Leah, and two concubines that each of his wives had given to them. And between the four of them, there were 12 sons born. But Rachel, whom he loved, Joseph was born as the 11th son, and Benjamin, the 12th son. But now, the, what they said is, our father's old, the youngest child is with him, because our other brother, basically, he is not. That's, that's, the, that's the conversation or the term that they used in the conversation. They said, basically, he's dead. So the youngest child is with the father because um, he's the child of our father's old age. And our father's not willing to just, just let him leave his sight. So he stayed behind. Joseph said, this is more of the reason why now, if to prove that you all are not spies, 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw you in the prison. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to keep you as servants here. And he threw them into prison. He took them into bondage. And then after three days or so, he comes and says, hey, I fear God. I can't hold y'all no more. But here's what I will do to let you prove that your story is true. You all go back, all right, but one has to stay. One of you has to stay. Go back and bring your youngest brother back to me. And as sure as Pharaoh, he was, he was basically saying Pharaoh is the king, I will, not, I will not require of him that he require of your life for spying on our land if you will return at some point with your younger brother. Ah, oh, they begin to think to themselves, this is going to be hard. If we go back home and one of us is missing and one of us is dead, which they considered Joseph to be dead, and now you're demanding that we bring the, the, the youngest son. Remember, we told you that our father's old and the woman that he loved brought forth two sons and the oldest of those two sons is dead, this is a hard situation to be in. We're not sure how, how, this is, how this is gonna turn out. But you know what? We've gotta give it a shot. The Bible says that uh, Joseph sent them on their way. And in their sacks, they had money. They had money that they had brought to exchange for bread and for corn and, 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 and to be provided for. And it wasn't until that they returned back home that they found out that uh, in their sacks was the same amount of money that they had taken to go and to buy food. And they began to think to themselves when they got ready to uh, feed, as it were, their, their, their cattle. And, and they looked, the Bible says that they would give uh, provender. They would make sure that their asses, the transportation that they used, the camels to uh, take them back and forth was properly nourished and could, could have water. And they noticed that in their sack was, was monies that had been given back to them unbeknownst to them. Can you imagine living the dream that you, you're taking as what you thought was your last to, to go and to uh, find provision, to find provision, and you get to the place to check out you get to the cashier, and uh, uh, somehow it rings up. Tab is already paid. Bill is already satisfied. Some of you can recall being in a restaurant and, and seeing someone you know, and you, you, you exchange pleasantries, and, and then you go and you sit down at your table, and, and you're having dinner, you're having breakfast, you're having lunch, and then getting down to the end of your lunch, your dinner, to find out that, the bill has already, has already been paid. So, so you can imagine, as it is the appreciation and, and the sense of uh, thanksgiving that you have to know that somebody considered you and somebody was thinking about you and uh, you're just so grateful and appreciative. I, I want to say to you that repeatedly, this is getting ready to happen for someone that, that as you're living the dream, that God is going to make provision for you in the areas that you thought that you, you had no idea. He, he's getting ready to bless you in an area that you have not even asked him to bless you in. Yeah, he's getting ready to do exceeding abundantly above all that you ask or think. So they, they find here that they have money in their sacks and, and, and time goes by and, and they rehearse with their father the story of how that they had to leave, as it were, uh, Simeon behind and and, and the father says, now, what, what, what are you all talking about? I, I'm, I'm, I'm old. I'm already grieving because of, because of my 11th son that's dead. And, and now my other son you left behind. And, and they begin to go through the whole idea of that, well, father, he asked us, um, if we had a father, he asked us about our lives. And our lives were on the line. We had to do something. We had to do something. We had to think on our feet. And, and this was the compromise. Some days go by. The father says again, uh, as that they ran low of the initial provision that they brought back, 
And Jacob says to his sons again, he says, um, these are desperate times. These, these are desperate measures. And you all have to go back again and get us, get us some food. And the son said, the only way that we can go back and appear before this man is we've got to take Benjamin, Dad. We, you got to, Judah, says, Judah says he's got to go with us. And Reuben went as far as to say, look, take my two sons if I'm not responsible to get him in and bring him back to you alive. They were doing everything they could to, to, to get Dad to buy into the fact that the only way we can go back into Egypt and appear before this governor, this ruler, for food is we've got we've to do what he said do. So the father, Jacob, finally, he finally comes around and he, he, he gives into the idea of, of after they rehearsed in chapters 43 with him of what was necessary to be done. So it is, it is in uh, chapter 43 that he gives permission and says, okay, do, do as you say. And so as we're coming now into the 44th chapter, the Bible says that the brothers traveled back into Egypt. But this time, they have Benjamin. And as they get ready to come, as they get ready to come before uh, Joseph's presence, Joseph says to his servants, have those men come over my house. And he says, let's make a feast. And now the brothers are thinking to themselves, uh-oh, he wants to bring us into his house because he's discovered that we had money in our sack. It was actually the monies that we were supposed to leave behind because we, we came to buy. And so therefore, he wants to judge us now. He, he wants to deal with us some kind of a way. Isn't it amazing that sometimes in all of your intent and, and, and all of your purity uh, to bless others, that they could be so skeptical at times that they're trying to calculate and they're, they're trying to size it up and make sense of it. I, I want to say to somebody, uh, to take, take the glasses of skepticism off and, and let your eyes see the goodness of the Lord and, and the blessing of the Lord and, and everyone that blesses you doesn't have an ulterior motive. Everyone that seeks to do you good, there are no underlining issues. There, there are no strings attached. Understand that you are living the dream. And there's a place and a space in the dream that God wants to bless you with the choice blessing. And it's not always what you think it is. In other words, you know, there are some of us, we have not dealt with others with a pure heart. We've not always dealt with others with clean hands. And sometimes we think that we're getting ready to reap in areas that we have not sown good seed. But it's not always the case. The Bible does say that you will reap what you sow. But in this case, Joseph had something else in mind. He had something else in mind. For the same reason that the father said, Jacob said, before you all go back, take double this time. Take double the money. And also take a gift to give to this man. Thinking that maybe this would, this would calm him down and and maybe, you know, the Lord will be, will be merciful unto you and you can get your brother back and, and you'll bring my young son back just hoping that everything go well because my heart can't take any more setbacks. So not only did the second time they go and, and they travel, but they travel with double the money just in case they needed to pay for the first and they needed to pay for the second. And on top of that, we're going to give you a gift. <laughs> and Joseph arrived home and said, the Lord bless you. In other words, peace be unto you. That's not why I'm calling you into my house. See, when you're living the dream, my God, you just come to a place in God where he gives you peace on how even to deal with your enemies. He brings you into a place that, as the scripture says, uh, you begin to heap coals of fire upon the heads of your enemy. You will make your enemies your footstool. When a man's ways pleaseth God, even his enemies 
will be at peace with him. His servants sits them in one area and then the Egyptian servants sit in another area and Joseph is sitting in his area because the custom was that the Hebrews and, and, and the Egyptians did not, they did not eat together, they did not fellowship together. But when he saw Benjamin, his brother, the Bible says he couldn't, he couldn't contain his emotion. When he saw his, his younger brother and, and, and he runs off and, and he begins to yearn and he begins to cry in another room. There's a footnote there that, that when you need a moment, go ahead and take it. Go ahead and take it. There are times that, 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 that the blessing of the Lord, that answered prayers, that real time manifests itself in real time, that your dream and your vision, it will bring tears to your eyes. It will bring an overwhelming uh, feeling of, of joy and laughter and, and even in this case for, for Joseph, he could not appear to be weak before them. So he went and he had a private moment. Every now and again, you need to take a private moment. You need to step away from everybody and step away from everything and, and reflect on God's goodness and reflect on God's mercy and, and reflect, on, reflect on God's blessing. The Bible says that they went on and, and they... He began to, to feast, and, and he got ready to send them on their way, and he, he instructed his servants to, to bless them, to give them all of what they need, and even give them extra. But there was something special about Benjamin, his brother. He, he, he gave him five times the amount. You know, he, he, he blessed him five times. The, the number five, according to biblical numerology, says it's the number of grace. The Lord will give you grace to live your dream. The Lord will give you grace as you're going through the phases and, and places and, and seasons of your dream. The Lord gives you grace. So Benjamin had five times the amount than his brother. But he also said to his servant, in his sack, put my silver cup in it. Benjamin didn't know. He didn't know that the servant was loading him up with goods and in addition to the goods, the silver cup. And after they left from his presence and was, was headed back home, uh, Joseph said to his servant, now, now, now go and catch them. Find out who has my silver cup. And when the servant catches up with them, and they, and the servant approaches them and says, have, we, have, my, have my master not done good to you that you would return evil to him? His cup is missing. He says, now i got to search all of you. And uh, Judah spoke up and says, we, would, we wouldn't do that. We, we had double of the money from the first time that we came and found monies in our sack because it was replaced to us. We had no intentions. There, there are none of us that has his cup. And if you search and find any of us that have his cup, we will be his servants. That person will be his servant if you find who has the silver cup. Wouldn't you know it? <laughs> Benjamin has the silver cup in his sack. So there's the discovery of the silver cup, which now, according to their word, Benjamin is left behind with his brother. And they find themselves, after the discovery here of the silver cup in 44, they says, now, there's no way. There's no way. They begin to plead their case to Joseph and say, there's no way that we could return back home without without our younger brother. The, the only way that we could convince our father enough that, to, to come back is we had to come back with him because you said bring him, our younger brother. But there's no way we can go back home without him. There's no way we can go back home without him. I, I, I want to read to you some verses here out of, out of uh, 45, chapter 45. Let me see if I can... I want to read to you some of this language here out of 45. Then Joseph could not refrain himself after that they had rehearsed the fact that they could not go home and, and they, were, they, were, they were all perplexed. And so Joseph could not refrain himself before all them that stood by him and he cried, cause every man to go out from me. He said, cause every man to get out from me. 
And there stood no man with him while Joseph made himself known unto his brother. So this time, Joseph could not refrain himself because he heard his brethren uh, arguing amongst themselves. He knew that they were in a tight fix. And they said, if we go back home without our brother, we're going to kill our father. And Joseph couldn't, he couldn't stand to hear these words because, because their father was his father. And he caused all of his servants to flee. And this is what he said. And there stood no man with him while Joseph made himself known unto his brother. In verse number two. And he wept aloud. And the Egyptians and the house of Pharaoh heard. Joseph said unto his brother, I am Joseph. Doth my father yet live? And his brethren could not answer him, for they were troubled at his presence. And Joseph said unto his brethren, Come near to me, I pray you. And they came near. And, and he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. See, they... they they didn't know how to handle him at this point. Because in their mind, he was dead. In their heart, he was dead. And here it is, the one that they buried for dead, they sold, is beckoning them, my God, to come so he can hold them. See, this is why I tell you that while you are living the dream, while you are living the dream, keep your heart pure. Keep your hands clean. Uh, Jesus says, bless those that curse you. Pray for them that despitefully use you because you just never know in the part of the dream that those that tried to bury you for dead, those that tried to sell you out, that you'd have to embrace. Five. Now therefore be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that ye sold me hither. For God did send me before you to preserve life. For these two years have the famine been in the land, and yet there are five years in the which there shall neither be uh, earring nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve your posterity in the earth and to save your lives by great deliverance. In other words, he was saying to them, this is not what you all did. This is the Lord's doing. He has sent me ahead of y'all, hallelujah, to preserve your life while preserving mine. So now it was not that you sent me hither but God, and he hath made me a father to Pharaoh, and lord of all his house, and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. Hey she, go up to my father, and say unto him, Thus saith thy son Joseph, God hath made me lord of all Egypt. Come down unto me, hurry up and get here, and thou shalt dwell in the land of Goshen, and thou, uh, and thou shalt be near unto me, thou and thy children, and thy children's children, and thy flocks, and thy herds, all that thou hast. And there will I nourish thee. For yet there are five years of famine. Lest thou and thy household, and all that thou hast come to poverty. And behold, your eyes see, and the eyes of my brother Benjamin, that it is my mouth that speaketh unto you. And ye shall tell my father of all my glory in Egypt, and all that ye have seen. And ye shall haste and bring down my father hither. So Joseph is saying, not only am I embracing you, but I need to embrace my father. Go get him. And he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept. And Benjamin wept upon his neck. Moreover, he kissed all his brethren and wept upon them. And after that, his brethren talked with him. And the fame thereof was heard in Pharaoh's house, saying, Joseph's brethren are come. And it pleased Pharaoh well and his servants. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, say unto thy brethren. Now Pharaoh understand what's going on. He says, this do ye, lay your beasts, and go and get unto the land of Canaan, and take your father and your households, and come unto me, and I will give you the good of the land of Egypt, and ye shall eat the fat of the land. Now thou art commanded, this do ye, take ye wagons out of the land of Egypt, for your little ones, and for your wives, and bring your father and come. Also regard not the stuff for the good of the land of Egypt is yours. And the children of Israel did so. And Joseph gave them wagons according to the commandment of Pharaoh and gave them provision for the way. In other words, when Pharaoh heard that these were Joseph's brothers and they were going back to get his father, he said, don't just send them back any kind of a way. Send them back in the best, with the best wagons. Let them take more than enough with them. See, when you are living the dream, and your ways please God, God will put you in a place that even the king will have favor. Favor that will bless you 
that would be a blessing to all those that are connected to you. And they go back and they do as Joseph says. And, and, and the words of Jacob, when they rehearsed the story with him, he says, well, now, it's hard for me to fathom and, and believe that this is true, but take me to my son so I can die. Let, let my eyes just see him so I can die. I want to give you another footnote. Don't die before it's time. Go ahead and live. Live, live out the dream of, of what God has given you. Live out the destiny of what God has in store for you. Don't say you're too this or you're too that or, or this has happened or that has happened. Keep on living. Keep on living the dream. The Bible says over uh, in chapter number 46 as they begin their travel and God visited Joseph in a dream and confirmed to him it was all right to go and, and that the Lord would bring him back at the appointed time and, and he heard from the Lord and he went. The Lord reminded him that, that, that I told you I was going to bless you, Joseph or Jacob, and your seed and, and your seed seed, the blessing that was on your father, Isaac, on your father's father, Abraham, is carried down to you. And he comes now into chapter 47 where he is introduced to Pharaoh after he sees Joseph and Joseph begins to introduce him to Pharaoh. It is in chapter 46 that you see all the names, all those that travel, the sons and their children and their wives and their children's children and, 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 and the list goes on all the way until it says it was about three score and six. That would say it's about 66 of them, not including the wives of the sons or even Joseph and his sons. And so all in all, it went from three scores and six to three scores and ten. The, the, the seed of, of Jacob that is now here in Egypt. He meets Pharaoh and he says to Pharaoh, I'm 130 years old. He blesses Pharaoh. And the Bible says uh, in, in chapter number 47, that's where I'll give you these four points tonight, a strategy for success. The Bible says that the famine began to intensify itself, began to intensify itself in the land of Egypt and even around. And the people had become desperate. And the Bible says in verses 12 through 13 that Joseph had already gathered all, all the bread. That's right, all the bread. Point number one, a strategy for success. Here is what you have to do while you're living the dream. Remember, after you interpret the culture of our day, the climate of our day, after you look and you see the evidence that become more fruitful and, and apparent that as Joseph interpreted Pharaoh's dream that there would be seven years of famine and, and seven years of feast or seven years of plenty, when you learn how to prepare for fat and lean from the third installment on Sunday, you've got to begin to execute. After the Lord allow you to see it, you've got to begin to execute there, uh, there, there in, in, in the manner according to what you see. And so Joseph began to gather all the bread. Not only did he gather all the bread, but he gathered, according to verse 14, all the money. That's point number two. And then he gathered, y'all, verse 17, Point number three, all the cattle. There came a time where the people in Egypt was doing well. And then well started becoming worse. And they went to Joseph and said, we don't have, we don't have anything to eat. But because Joseph was wise and gathered all the bread, he had a, he had a strategy for success. He knew that there was coming a time where that, where that there would be lack. They went to him and says, we don't have any bread. Joseph said, okay, well, I can give you bread, but you got to give me your cattle. So now all of a sudden, not only does he have all the bread and all the money, but he's got all the cattle. The Bible said two years went by, and here they come again. We don't have no cattle. We don't have no bread. All we have is land. They begin to sell their land to Joseph which now Joseph has, in point number four, all the land. So he's got all the bread. He's got all the money. He has all of the cattle. And he has all of the land. And they came back again. 
And they said, now, Lord, they addressed him as Lord because he's Lord. He's the ruler of Egypt. Pharaoh put him over everything except the throne. They said, we don't want to die like this. We don't have anything left. There's none left but our bodies. It is there that Joseph begins to give them seed for the land so their land could, could reproduce and, and bring forth. And he says, now here's what you're going to do. You're going to give a fifth part when you gather to the king. You're going to keep four parts for yourself. Notice he's communicating here a strategy for survival, a, a strategy for, for, their, for their ability to maneuver and navigate. See, when you're living the dream, the, the Lord will give you wisdom on how not just to provide for you, but how to help others around you provide for themselves. Here we are at the precipice of, of, of a new horizon. Here the year, the season that we've been all talking about, none like we've ever seen before. How long will we just sing songs that give glory to God, but then live lives foolishly? How long will we as Christians only pray and quote scripture verses, but never allow for our prayer to manifest in the scripture verses that we quote to manifest in real time, where the application of God's word begins to take seed in our life and fruit in our life, that we actually begin to cultivate and bring forth what his word says. How long will we walk with our head uh, buried in the sand and, and as it is metaphorically stopping up our ears to not consider the climate around us? As much as we want to shun the world that we consider to be Egypt, it was here that they had to go to Egypt. It's a lesson that we can learn, Christians, believers and viewers, from those that we shun from those that we ignore, from those that we sometimes bury for dead. The Bible said all the countries, all the people had to come to Joseph because he was wise. He had a strategy for success. He says the fifth part you will give to the king and the fourth part you would keep to yourself, which will provide for you seed for the land repeatedly, food for you, food for your servants, and food for your children. There's a strategy here that he gave them. He says, only the priests, you can't touch their portion of the land. You can't, you, can't, you can't do anything with them. Their portion is their portion. How many know that God will always take care of his own? He will always take care of his own. When you get over into the 48th chapter, it is there that Jacob blessed Joseph, and not only Joseph, but Joseph's sons. But he didn't bless them in the order that seemingly he should have oldest to the youngest. He crisscrossed. And he blessed the youngest first and then the oldest, the right hand to the youngest, which is the, the hand of authority and strength and blessing, because he said that the oldest would serve the younger. And Joseph thought that he was making a mistake because he's old and his eyes are dim. He says, no, my son, I'm not, I'm not making a mistake. I know what I'm doing. It is in 49 that Jacob calls all his sons. He gives his last will and his last testament to them by their names. Their names had meaning. And he began to speak into their lives, which says that there's a part in all of our lives as living the dream that we have an obligation, we have a responsibility to bless the next generation to communicate our will, to communicate our testament. You've heard me say this before, don't, don't leave anything behind where others have to fight over. Set your house in order. Jacob found himself doing that before his sons as he blessed them. And finally, he's buried in chapter 50. And Joseph finds himself forgiving his brothers because they thought to themselves, now our father's dead. Surely our brother know who we are and what we've done to him and how we've buried him and portrayed his death and sold him and he's going to deal rough with us. He's going to deal harshly with us. And it is, it is Joseph that says over in chapter 50, verse number 20, you meant it for evil, but God 
God meant it for good. You thought to do me evil, but God meant it for good. Living the dream, living the dream. I say to you, keep on living the dream. Interpretation. Ask the Lord to give you understanding what you see and what, what, what you see in your heart, what you see in your vision, what, what you see in your spirit. And then know that in real time, it's going to manifest itself. And ultimately, make sure you have a strategy. You have a plan. You execute your plan. You use wisdom. Don't get caught up in the years of feast. There may be a season of famine. But you'll use the wisdom of the Lord as Joseph did. God will not only give you a dream. You'll go through the pit moment sometimes. You'll be sold out and betrayed sometimes. Just to wound up promoted in in the palace to be thrown into the prison but ultimately your gift makes room for you and brings you before before great men i tell you go ahead and live the dream keep on living the dream live it until your children live it until your children's children live it until your family around you is blessed because you are a joseph father in jesus name tonight we say thank you we thank you for this fourth installment. Thank you for this series of messages. Thank you for these viewers that have listened, have watched, and I pray that they're blessed. I ask that you would give them a Joseph's grace. My God, is even the word released in the house on Sunday until you give us international, hallelujah, international influence. Give us a Joseph's grace that we have wisdom and we use discretion, that we have a plan and we execute accordingly. Give us, give us a Joseph's grace until we can forgive even those that, that did not handle us properly. Give us a Joseph's grace until the blessing is passed down. As your word said that Joseph saw the third generation from his loins. Give us, give us a, a Joseph's grace of, of longevity. Even how you kept Jacob. He was 130 years, but he lived 17 more years. I speak life to somebody tonight. And I tell you, don't die. Don't abort. Don't forfeit. Don't, don't, don't throw your dream away. Your eyes will see, as like Jacob's did, as like Joseph's did. So shall your eyes see. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. If you're not saved tonight, repent of your sin. That is to be godly sorry in your heart. And ask Jesus to come into your life. Ask him to forgive you of your sin. And commit your life to Christ. Tonight is your night. So you can begin to live the dream. That God has ordained. His purpose and plan. There's a number on the screen. Call that number. Someone will be standing by. And they will pray with you. They will pray with you. Maybe you're looking for a church home. A better life ministry is, is waiting to receive you. I'd love to be your pastor. I'd love for you to become a partner or, or a member so that you can have a Joseph that will speak into your life to help you interpret, to help you walk in real time, and ultimately you'll receive a strategy for success where you will have all of the bread, all of the money, all of the cattle, all of the land. Come on and be a partner. Come. Join in. Go to our website, ablm1.org, and hit the link, member or partner, and join in with us, and we'll make the appropriate connections to receive you in, to take you through our Shepherd to Lambs course, and make sure that you become acclimated, and even remotely from where you are, technology, the advancements of our day and this culture and this time has made it possible that even still, from where you are, we can still connect we can still connect. The Lord bless you tonight. The Lord keep you is our prayer. Living the dream. Will you clap your hands from where you are and, and give God praise and thanks for the fourth installment. If you miss one, two, and three, go back uh, on our Facebook page and find it and it will, it will bless you. It will bless you. Let's honor the Lord tonight in our giving. I'm going to ask that all of the uh, members, if you have a tithe, that you would honor the Lord with your tithe. You have an offering that in the middle of the week we ask every member 
ever remember to consecrate, to set aside, to give, to give $20 in the Midweek Connect. I am going to do the same as I'm asking that all, all of the members, all of the partners would do that. Would honor the Lord, honor the Lord with the gift in the Midweek Connect of $20. You do that at this time and the house of the Lord will be blessed. The house of the Lord will be blessed. So why don't you do that? Why don't you do that? And as we know, we're looking forward to the third Sunday as that all our members and partners and leaders will bring the Lord a special offering, a special offering. You know, harvest is a time of reflecting, rejoicing, and, and rallying, coming together. And we're going to come together and we're going to honor the Lord with a special offering, a special harvest celebration offering as that every member has been asked for a special offering of $1,000 as we honor the Lord together, as we say, thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness down throughout this year, down throughout this pandemic, down throughout this season. that the key to life is a better life. It's a better life. Go in God's peace. Until Sunday morning, the Lord bless you. 10 a.m. right here, A Better Life Ministry, 129 Linden Avenue in Jersey City, New Jersey.